Welcome to Bench and Tips. Today, we'll cover how to design a belt conveyor. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to select and size a conveyor, as well as design its base frame. Belt conveyors are commonly used in material transfer applications, such as transporting goods down a production line, or as a part of infeed and outfeed systems for palletizers. To make sure that the right conveyor is selected for both size and weight of your product, you can refer to our belt conveyor data sheet by clicking the link in the description below. In our case, we will base our design on a 300mm square box. Now that we know what product we'll be designing around, we can start to build our conveyor. To begin, we'll navigate to the belt conveyors by selecting the material handling icon in the parts library on the left. Similar to designing with Vengeance aluminum extrusion, there are multiple ways you can go about selecting and resizing your conveyor. First, you can select your desired length directly from the drop-down menu after choosing the conveyor width, which in our case will be 475 millimeters. Otherwise, you can select the conveyor and resize it after it has been dropped into the design by dragging the arrows at either end. We'll be designing around a 1.5 meter long conveyor. If you have the configuration assistant turned on, a window will appear once the conveyor is placed in the design. This tool assists the user by giving step-by-step -step guidance for designing with more complex components. For now, we'll leave the assistant off as it will be covered in a later session. In order to attach the conveyor to a vention structure, we'll need to use the belt conveyor mounting bracket, also located in the material handling section of the parts library. These parts have been specially designed with slotted holes to allow for fine-tune adjustment when mounting. The recommended spacing for the mounts can also be found on the belt conveyor data sheet in our resource center. The final component needed before we move on to the base structure is the motor mount. This allows us to drive the conveyor using Vengeance motors. For the base structure, we'll start with the frame that the conveyor will rest on, using the 45 by 90 millimeter extrusions as the primary attachment points. The orientation of the 45 by 90 millimeter extrusion allows it to accommodate the wide conveyor while still providing room for adjustment during deployment. From here, we'll build up the rest of the frame. This includes proper plate selection, corner reinforcement, bracing, and additional hardware. If you need help with this step, you can refer to our design guide linked in the description below. The available T-slot channel on either side of the conveyor allows for additional hardware to be added, such as guides, sensors, and even pneumatics. Now that the frame is finished, we can add the motion components. In the parts library, select Controls and Motors and select Machine Motion 2 OneDrive and attach it to your frame. You will be prompted to add an e-stop module to your design, which can be found further down in the Controls and Motors category. We'll add one module to either side of the conveyor. It should be noted that if you have a design that has more than one conveyor or actuator, select the Machine Motion 2 for drive instead. The final component needed to complete the conveyor is the stepper servo motor, also found in the Controls and Motors section of the parts library. With this, you have completed your conveyor and are ready to start programming. If you'd like to learn how to program your conveyor using machine logic, click the link in the description below to get started. That wraps up the session on designing a belt conveyor in Machine Builder. Thank you for watching and happy designing.